This is America's CRAM weapon system. CRAM is an advanced automated point defense Gatling gun. Indirect fire from mortars, missiles, and artillery shells was a very serious concern for armed forces during battle, but thanks to point defense systems like the CRAM, indirect fire of this nature may have finally met its match. Standing for Counter, Rocket, Artillery, and Mortar, the CRAM is a land-based phalanx weapon system able to have other protection sensors and systems integrated as well. The system is designed and manufactured by the American company Raytheon. Phalanx is the last line of defense that, using a rapid-fire computer-controlled radar and 20mm gun system, automatically acquires, tracks, and destroys enemy threats that have penetrated all other ship defense systems. The Phalanx was originally designed as a ship-based anti-missile system. The Centurion Weapon System mission represents a revolutionary approach to countering insurgent activities by intercepting rocket artillery and mortar rounds in the air before impact, thereby reducing or eliminating any potential incoming damage. The Phalanx Close-In Weapon System, SeaWiz, incorporates a 20mm M61 Vulcan Gatling gun autocannon used since 1959 and it was first developed as an automated weapon defense system that introduced its first prototype in 1973. But the CRAM's naval equivalent had to wait until 2004 to be considered as a possible ground-based variant. Phalanx was selected partly because it could be readily interfaced with a multitude of sensors and systems designed to provide an overarching protection umbrella of sites on the ground. In its land-based configuration, the Phalanx Weapon System LPWS, is mounted on a wheeled platform in order to provide enhanced stability as well as mobility for repositioning and deployment. This feature allows the Centurion C-RAM to be mounted on a trailer or even the rear side of the Oshkosh truck. Based on its success, in October 2008, Raytheon and Oshkosh unveiled the Mobile Centurion which mounts the system on a hybrid electric heavy expanded mobility tactical truck. The first CRAM ready for battle was deployed in Iraq in 2010 in order to protect the Green Zone, an area in Baghdad where the American Embassy is located. After the test, the system showed itself capable of knocking out 70 to 80 percent of all the rockets and mortar shells fired within its area of control. The CRAM system finally proved its capabilities as a defense system after successfully intercepting hundreds of rockets and mortar shells fired at the Green Zone. Like its naval counterpart, the CRAM also utilizes advanced search and track KU band radar systems that features closed loop spotting technology to automatically acquire, track, and engage its targets. Just as a friendly reminder, in case you're not aware, KU band is the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum in the microwave range of frequencies between 12 and 18 gigahertz. Similar systems were installed on the space shuttle to help identify and track other spacecraft. A series of other sensors and systems can also be incorporated to this system to help provide an overarching protective umbrella in order to guard a given location on the ground. The weapon's primary armament is the 20mm Vulcan Gatling cannon a design originally produced by General Electric. These metal beasts consist of six optimized barrels augmented with forward-looking infrared sensors and secured together at the muzzle, mid-barrel, and breech to provide enhanced accuracy and enable fire to constrained shot dispersion patterns. The U.S. Army also uses the M61 along with the M167 and M163 air defense systems as the primary weapon system on the F-15, F-16, and F-18 fighters of the United States Air Force. Not to mention that the gun also works as the tail gun on the B-52H bomber, while a lightweight variant is used on the F-22 Raptor fighter. With all things considered, all that firepower is just half the story. If you can't track and accurately put the cannon rounds in the right place at the right time, you'll end up with just a fancy piece of pyrotechnics. To properly set up this kind of weapon, they'd have to use a combination of advanced sensors that enable the C-RAMs to simultaneously search, track, engage incoming targets, prioritize them, and make kill assessments in both daytime and nighttime. With the incorporation of the C-RAM's KU band radar system, the weapon is able to detect potential threats early in the flight and then pass on its trajectory and vector data to the systems, tracking algorithms only when it judges them as an immediate real danger.
This tracking and engagement feature is further enhanced by a sophisticated thermal imaging system to help improve its targeting. The system operates in the 8 to 12 micron wavelength range and is mounted on a stabilizing pedestal attached to the weapon's main antenna radome, providing very reliable night and day passive search and tracking while also improving the overall anti-air warfare performance of the system in multi-path environment. But that's not all. Furthermore, other tracking systems integrated into the Centurion CRAM system include Northrop Grumman's ANT PQ-36 short-range fire finder radar, lightweight counter-mortar radar used to detect and track fired rounds. Such complex hardware is carried out by fire control subsystems like the Northrop Grumman Mission Systems Forward Area Air Defense Command and Control System, which ties together the sensors and weapons of the Army's short-range air defense battalions. As you might expect, such a sophisticated piece of kit does not come cheap. Each CRAM system on its own costs somewhere in the range of 10 to 15 million dollars depending on the final spec of the units purchased. But that's only the cost to initially acquire the technology as such massive rate of fire. With such a massive rate of fire, this unit literally burns through bullets, meaning that depending on the number of munitions spent, a typical engagement with only a single missile could cost about thirty dollars to $60,000. So considering all the calculations, the estimated cost for firing each missile is set at around $40,000. As we said, anything but cheap. This is not only expensive from a material perspective, but also represents one of the main disadvantages of the whole system. Thinking about it theoretically, by spending so much on ammo on just a single target, a limited ammunition supply would limit the number of threats that the unit can engage at a given time. So what does this lead to? Well, this might mean that the Centurion C-RAM would probably have a maximum anti-RAM cap of about five incoming rounds before needing to be reloaded. And that's not all. The system has to face some other perceived weaknesses too. For example, it takes about five seconds to acquire, lock onto, and engage an incoming threat, and also has a fairly short effective range of between 100 and 1,000 meters. But with weaknesses aside, this system proved to be one of the most effective anti-missile, mortar, and artillery defense systems in the world. And so, for such reason, it'll likely remain as a key player for many armed forces around the globe for many years to come.